Hello, LB DLCS students, family, and friends. There's snow day like a reading day. So if we're going to be reading, why not have a little bit of fun? So I am going to read The Night Before, The Night Before Christmas by Natasha Wing, illustrated by Mike Lester. And then after I read this book, I'm going to read how this amazing author got all of these great ideas for the night before something. We'll see it at the end. The Night Before, The Night Before Christmas by Natasha Wing, illustrated by Mike Lester. Twas the night before, the night before Christmas, with too much to do, our tree wasn't up yet, and Mom had the flu. Our cookies were burned. There were presents to wrap. Mom snippled. What I need is a long winter's nap. But instead we drove miles to go get our tree. Last week there were millions. Now there were three. Dad tied the tree to our car. This will just have to do. Mom nodded gloomily and sneezed. We dragged in our tree through the front door. It dropped half its needles all over the floor. Just then, Patrick pointed to something quite shocking. Oh no, there were holes in everyone's stocking. Instead, we, instead we hung socks by the chimney with care. I hoped that St. Nick would fill up my spare. Things will get better, I thought, as I crawled into bed. Maybe visions of sugar plums will dance in my head. Instead, I lay wondering, gazing up at the moon. What on earth is a sugar plum? Is it a candy or a prune? Early the next morning, I woke up from a dream. Be careful, Harold, I heard my mom scream. Out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter. I sprang from my bed to see Dad on a ladder. He was stringing up lights on the rooftop and gutters, outlining the railings, the windows, and shutters. When he plugged in the cord, not a single light lit. We did have extra bulbs. Yes, but none of them fit. So off to the mall, our family did drive. When Dad saw the crowds, he gasped, Sakes alive! We searched every store. All the lights were sold out. But I finally found something for Grandpa. Silly Gilly the Trout. Finally all done with our last minute shopping, we flew past the food court without even stopping. But I want to see Santa, Patrick said with a whine. We pushed through the crowd. Wow, what a line. I wrapped round, it wrapped round the counters and down the first floor, then wound through kids' clothing and out the front door. After waiting for hours, at last, our big chance, Santa roared, ho, ho, ho. Then Pat wet his pants. Let's go home, we all cried, Mom, Patrick, and me. Even jolly old Dad sighed and said, oh, I agree. So on the way home, we sang the Jingle Bell song. All the while, I was thinking nothing else could go wrong. When what to our wondering eyes should appear but a gigantic mess that much was clear. The tree was knocked over, my snow globe was shattered, ornaments were broken, pencil was scattered. Bad kitty, I shouted, then mom started to weep. Christmas is ruined and I need some sleep. No, it's not sugar plum. These things are just stuff. Christmas is about love and we have quite enough. He tucked mom in bed for some much needed rest. Then we three busy elves all gave it our best. As snow gently fell, turning the earth sparkly white, I knew in my heart Christmas would turn out just right. Dad read us a book and gave us a kiss. It was my favorite story and it began like this. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Boys and girls, that is called an illusion. It's when a book makes a reference to another book. And I'm going to read that book right now. That book is The Night Before Christmas. 
illustrated by Douglas Carl's line. The Night Before Christmas. This is my husband's actual book from when he was a little boy. And every week before Christmas, I read this book to all of you. This year is no exception. I may not physically be with you to read it, but you're getting it read to this way, virtually. The Night Before Christmas by Clement C. Moore, illustrated by Douglas Glorswine. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas would soon be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap when out on the lawn there arose such a clatter. I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively, so quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his cursors they came and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer, now Vixen, on Comet, on Cubit, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky, so up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His cheeks how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His draw little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke had encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, as he drove out of sight. Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. So boys and girls and friends, this is called an illusion. When an author writes a book and mentions another book, that's called an illusion. It means they reference another book. Something that Mrs. Maureen really likes to do is find the book that is being referenced and read that book. What a fun activity to do on a snow day. Have a great holiday, everybody. Bye.